today po sa inyo lahat. Si Dr. Erwin Joseph Cruz po ito, uh, free range poultry dog quail specialist. At nandito po tayo sa isang uh, introduction to a sustainable free range poultry production sa inyong mga provinces. So opportunity po to as an additional source of income, opportunity to have good food, uh, eggs and meat na pwede niyong pagkakitaan din. So uh, stick around and we will show you part of it as an introductory portion. Thank you. Welcome and mabuhay. Uh, everybody's welcome to listen and uh, see this video uh, to show you some introduction on uh, free range chicken sustainable program for the provinces. Before anything else, let us take a moment and unitedly say a prayer. God, thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We are truly grateful for them. Thank you for allowing us today to meet and share our knowledge and time with one another in this seminar. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers so that we he would be able to impart effectively his God-given knowledge to all of us. May he be blessed as he continues to bring his expertise to people who need him. Bless the participants as well so they would be able to glean the vital information from this activity. May you bestow your blessings after this seminar so that we may go out and spread what we learn in the spirit of your love and generosity. May we realize that this activity should glorify your name. Amen. Okay, get your pen and papers ready. Take down notes and keep everything you learn today. So, pagkakataon na po natin, i-take down ang mga notes para po marireview nyo every time you try to practice the program in your localities. This is an introduction on sustainable free-range chicken program in the provinces. What we are focusing more is making things more sustainable on a provincial level. Nakita po natin ang mga importance dito as relevant as now. So I hope that this can provide you some knowledge when you go through your journey on peerage poultry production. To all our frontline workers for your selfish, selfless dedication and relentless commitment to the call of duty, Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Mabuhay po kayo. We are all part of this and we need to help each other move forward our lives in, this, in our country. After 23 years of free range poultry since 1997, I'd like to thank everyone. Thank you very much po sa pagtulong, pag-support sa journey natin para sa maayos, ma -su successful, sustainable free-range poultry production. Nung umpisa po nito, wala o halos naniniwala. Minsan po, nag-seminar kami noon, tatlo lang po ang participants. At ang uh, matindi po noon, kahit uh, libre pagkain, tatatlo lang. At kami lang humag-asawa, ang kasama pa. So, katotohanan po noon, isa lang ang participant. <laughs> Ganun po talaga sa umpisa. Kung paano kami nag-umpisa, maaaring pong daanan din nyo sa inyong probinsya. Pero after 23 years, nakita natin na stable at sustainable ang program natin. Uh, we have programs to meet your egg production na free range and your meat production for inasal types. 
Makikita po natin ang ebidensya rito ng dami ng itlog at yung karni po ay hindi po payat, no? O hindi po konti, malaman po yan. Kaya po you can use this program much sa mga provincial levels. So pagka po may ganito kayo, meron kayong pagkain na makukuha from here at also livelihood. In times of crisis, food security is the always the priority. Sa ngayon po, nakikita natin ang value pagkain mo muna bago lahat. Kailangan po meron tayong maihatid sa ating mga pamilya. May food sa table ng bawat isang Pilipinong pamilya. Kaya po tayo ay uh, tumutulong sa ating uh, Department of Agriculture na maipush itong programang ito para po sa lahat ng Pilipino na gusto o interested mag-fearage poultry farming. Bago po ang lahat, bago po natin na uh, umpisa ng seminar proper, I always have this saying, an educated farmer is a successful farmer. Nakita ko po ang pag-angat ng knowledge ng ating mga farmers na hindi po basta bumibili lang at nanguhula ng resulta. Ang edukasyon ay isang importanteng hagdan para sa kaginhawaan sa kabukiran. Importante po muna ang institutional development dahil hindi lang po dapat sinusubuan lang natin ang tools ng machineries kung hindi kaalaman ang unahin. We need critical poultry and uh, agricultural farmers sa Pilipinas. Critical thinkers po dapat tayo nag tayo ng mainam na ito ba ay sapat o dapat sa ating mga farming practices sa ating kabukiran o probinsya. Hindi po yung kung ano lang ang sikat, yun lang ang inuuna. At later on, nagpe-fail. Kaya po, always remember, an educated farmer is a successful farmer. Yan po, ano? You have to prepare well. Proper education is the first step in preparation. Always get information from a reliable and reputable source. Ito po, nakita ko po ang kahalagahan. Ang nangyayari po sa ibang ating mga kasama ay uh, a blind leading another blind. Dahil po yung background knowledge at scientific basis, hindi po yun ang ang uh, laging binabasihan kung hindi anecdotal practices. Ang ibig sabihin po ng anecdotal practices, eh kung ano lang ang experience niya, yun ang akala niyang tama. Pagka po yun ang lagi natin pairalin, maaari po yung experience niya ay hindi tama o kulang ang mga inputs o knowledge na ipinasok. Kaya po importante na reputable ang source ninyo. Do not be a victim of buy chickens now and ask questions later. Nako, lagi ko pong nakikita ito sa Facebook at other social media. Uh, nagtatanong, paki-ID po, ano po ito, babae at lalaki? Uh, ano po kaya ang productivity nito? Dapat po inuuna, aral muna, bago po magbumili. Ang bumili po is just the second part of the project that you will do. Knowledge first, study po muna natin. Ano ba ang gusto natin gawin? Learn beyond the realm of social media. In many cases, better to research in the internet. Mag-aral po sa internet. That is already an advantage for us. Dito po sa multimedia age, no? Kailangan po makita natin ang, ang mga other options at studies to po sa gagawin natin. Hindi po yung may nakita lang tayo magandang picture. Katulad po dyan, ano, nag-aaral ng mga manok. Ewan ko po kung nababasa niya talaga yan. Pero uh, yan po ba ay will attract you to do free range poultry production? If yes, dapat po you go to the second step, which is to study it properly. Books and e-books are good sources of poultry information. Importante po that we have solid uh, knowledge backing us up through books and electronic books. As a matter of fact po, we will be uh, publishing an e-book and hopefully a uh, softbound book later on 
uh, tungkol sa successful village poultry farming sa Pilipinas. Uh, it's uh, in the works and we hope to uh, publish it before the end of the year. Proper education is very important to develop your farming system towards a sustainable poultry program. So, lagi po aral, knowledge ang ating kakampi upang maging matagumpay sa programa at maiwas yung sarili natin sa excessive na gastos, lugi, at mortality ng ating mga alaga. So, bago po mangyari yun, meron na tayong kaalam. Remember, one free-range chicken can produce all of this or can help you with your farming. The bug, ibig sabihin po yung mga peste doon sa isang lugar ay nababawasan nila dahil yan po ang kanilang paboritong kainin. Convert no? food waste into eggs. Ibig sabihin po kung mga tira-tira natin mga vegetables, yung mga hindi pa nabubulok na mga refuse sa ating mga household, pwede po natin pakain dito. And ang nangyayari po ay kinoconvert ng ating mga hens sa isang uh, masarap na produkto which is fresh eggs. No? Free range fresh eggs. Fertilize no? the garden. So yung manure po niya nakakatulong sa fertilization. Actually, it can be a source of organic fertilizers. Level a pile of uh, mulch in two days. Ibig sabihin po tumutulong sila sa mulching ng mga dead leaves. Help do a quarter of the work, turning compost pile. Ibig sabihin po niyan, sa kakakaikay nila, nakakatulong po silang i-improve yung compost pile ninyo. Produce enough manure in a month to make one cubic yard of compost from leaves. So nakakatulong po talaga sila sa organic fertilizer process. And of course, till 50 square foot of sod in 4 to 6 weeks, and uh, this can help you manage your land area. Break the life cycle of pests and disease of one fruit tree within an hour. Kasi po, yung mga pest, bugs, etc. na nabubuhay sa lupa ay matutulungan alisin o bawasan ng ating chicken. What will you gain from this seminar? So, bakit ba ako magtsatsaga makinig dito kay Dr. Erwin? Ano po ba ang mga makukuha natin for my mention dito sa seminar na to? This is a short introductory online seminar. This is more or less an hour or a bit more than an hour presentation to uh, provide you some vital information on, on matters regarding uh, pH poultry production and later on, succeeding modules that you can do. This presentation is for free. Ito pong first introductory part na ginawa namin are for beginners or those interested to avail of the intensive 3 to 4 hour program. So, pagka po ito ay uh, uh, na-view nyo sa Facebook through our page, Dominant Asia Pacific, uh, it will be for free. And then, if you are interested to do the upper modules or higher levels of learning, you can proceed to another system. What kind of chicken farmer are you? A general discussion on smallholder farming export enterprise. So, maybe uh, po tayo ng idea uh, to call sa uh, enterprise ng smallholder farming. The present poultry scenario in the provinces and actually sa Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The different colored chicken agribusiness models. So you have a glimpse of yung mga other agribusinesses that you can do with colored chicken. Effective and sustainable basic template of free-range chicken farming business in your provinces. So we are putting some directions in case you're interested to do free-range poultry farming. It's a potential profit center. We have farmers nationwide who are doing the program already and later on makita niyo yung mga pictures videos ng ginagawa nila and they have been sustainable for the past three years already so you might be interested in pursuing a profit center in your province 
critical pointers to make your free-range poultry farming successful. So, ito po yung mga bagay na initially dapat naintindihan nyo para maging successful ang inyong poultry farming. Uh, for those interested on the continuing comprehensive education for agri-entrepreneurs, uh, these are for farmers who are pursuing an agribusiness profit center in your, in your provinces. So, uh, ang focus dito is more on uh, agribusiness na ang level na to. Also recommended for first-time farmers who are committed to the program. So, uh, this is an opportunity for you to review and then later on, pursue the second uh, module. It matches medium-scale farming. So, if you will go semi-commercial, to commercial level, which is about 100 heads or more, we recommend that you do the continuing comprehensive education for agri entrepreneurs. It is also a refresher course for our certificate holders. So, yun pong mga nag-seminar na sa atin way back 4 years ago, 5 years ago, this will be a good refresher course for you since uh, you will be uh, putting your uh, focus on free range poultry programs, it is best to have a refresher course. A second online module, which is about free range chicken farming, layer or table egg production and in the south or meat production, will be a four to five hour intensive online seminar. Then afterwards, of the four to five hours intensive online seminar, we will have a live question and answer portion. Email electronic handouts for the seminar presentation and templates for review. So you have, we will be requesting for your email so that we can send the electronic handouts to you for the second module. We will include also a cost profit analysis, which you can use as a template when you do your actual costing in your farm. We will provide you some marketing progress with tips so you will know how to handle or manage your marketing of the products. A third module of the Continuing Comprehensive Seminar will be about genetics and breeder management. This will also be a four-hour presentation with a live question and answer portion. Paid seminars like the physical seminars. This will be a paid seminar like the physical seminars. So how do we go about this? Right now you are in the level of introductory to the pre-range poultry program and the poultry scenario in the Philippines, which is the module one. The second module will be sustainable pre-range chicken farming, layer type and in the south type. Then the third module will be colored chicken genetics and breeder management. And for those who will really be pursuing breeder management programs, we will have a fourth module which is hatchery management and breeder management troubleshooting. So you have a total of uh, four modules uh, for you to go into if you want to go and pursue free range farming up to breeding. Uh, setting up a breeder station in your provinces. For those interested with the modules 2 to 4, uh, you can uh, PM us, private message us on Dominant Asia Pacific for this online continuing comprehensive education. Please include your complete name, cell phone number, occupation, city and province and we will get back to you once you have uh, sent us a message prepare well before you start farming as nakita nyo nga rito sa picture natin preparation is always the key uh, we cannot do this in impromptu or on a on a level na biglaan lang. So you have to prepare so that less mistakes can be 
tinkered along the way. Study the farming program and decide if you want to do it. If you can do it. There are some areas that are uh, uh, that you can use for the farming. But there are some areas that you cannot uh, do the farming. And these things are, uh, are presented in the modules as you can see. When you decide to do the program, commit to it. Farming is a commitment. It requires time and attention, preparation and capitalization. So you need to be committed to do it. Get the correct information from credible sources. Attend the correct seminar. And uh, study it. You will save yourself time, money and frustrations when you have the proper knowledge. So you don't retrofit, you don't get confused and you don't get information overload. Get the right genetics. This is a major factor that will ensure the sustainability of your farming. It is very important that you get the right genetics all the time. I will show you later in the presentation why. Prepare your farm. Follow the program. Do not reinvent the wheel. Ang suggestion ko po sa iba who would like to do their own path, you try the standard system first before you try to modify anything if you really want to because we are doing this direct so that your your capital will go back to you with it, with, with the profit that uh, we, we expect you to have. Rather than uh, deviating along the way, this will incur some mistakes and it will be frustrating later on. Expect challenges and failures along the way, but always keep your focus. Part yan ang program. Any endeavor, it, it incurs challenges and failures. Always keep your focus. Do not allow the challenges to distract you. Allocate time. At least seven hours a week to manage your farm. And check your flock. So you need to manage your farm hand all the time and to check your flock. Always remember that most of the time it is your caretaker managing the flock. So you need more hours to educate them and direct them to be more productive. And you have the time to check your flock at least seven hours a week. Join our Furious Chicken community. Uh, we have in Facebook uh, the Furious community, Dominant Asia Pacific, Furious Central page, and then we have our uh, our groups. You can just check on Furious Poultry Production in, 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 the, in Facebook and you will see some, uh, some communities there that can assist you. Do your very best and leave the, uh, to God the rest. So this is also one thing that we would like to impart to you. What type of chicken racer are you? Are you a fancy chicken or heritage line racer? Which is usually you do this for hobby. You, you have you have farmers who are doing uh, the bantams, doing the fancy chickens, mostly for hobby, and secondary na lang yung uh, opportunity to earn. Always remember, once it is a hobby, you don't expect to earn so much from it. Are you the carefree backyard chicken raiser, which the productivity result doesn't matter? Farming is only for a backup food source. For example, uh, uh, birthdays, no? Meron mga celebration, fiestas. Usually, that's why you have uh, backyard uh, chicken raising to supplement you. I know in the parts of Mindanao, we have uh, farmers there who raise them because sometimes when they lack food, 
they just uh, sell their chickens or cook the chickens so that they can sustain their daily food requirement for their families. Are you the fighting cock raiser? No? As a hobby or is it a source of income? So, which are you at this in these categories? No? Are you the commercial chicken raiser? Which is a commercial white producer of meat or eggs? Purpose of farming is strictly for business because this is capital intensive. You need around 18 to 20 million just to set up the facilities, no? And uh, it requires you uh, uh, high capitalization. It says that you have to have a continuous productivity focus on getting returns on a faster way. Are you the fearless chicken and great preneur? Fresh food on the table for your family, committed farmer, offering healthy food alternatives with social contribution to society, providing food security in your province, helping in nation building, all of these while having a sustainable business in farming with good income. So tayo, we want to focus more on agripreneurship on free-range chicken production because all of these you can attain with, uh, with uh, decent capitalization. You don't need so much money. It's just a matter of following a system and a program. Decide first what type of chicken racer you want to be. Because uh, you cannot be all of that, number one. Number two, you should understand that if you focus on one, you should expect the results to be based on that focus that you will do. Okay? So you have to decide first on what type of chicken racer you want to be. Ano ba ang farming na gusto mong gawin? So, dapat decided ka muna dyan. Bago ka mag-embark, bago ka pong mag-pursue, hindi yung bibiglay mo yung sarili mo na, ay, bumili na ako manok sa palengke, gawin kong breeder, gawin kong grower, gawin kong ano, magbebenta ako ng maraming manok. We don't have the program, and then uh, you don't have the plants, you don't have the genetics, most probably, it will not be successful. We need to have a science-based free-range poultry program. You know why? We will explain it to you now. We need a farming program that is repli replicable for farmers. Only then can it be profitable and sustainable. Even when you repeat the process, the succeeding batches should have nearly the same productive and profitable results. Kailangan po, um, kailangan ang nagawa ko at ang mga sum sumusunod niyo sa aking program ay kaya niyo rin gawin. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, if I do it at this system and you do it in your system, it will have similar results. No? Paulit-ulit natin per batch, we have success, we have profit. Hindi pwedeng one time lang kumita, succeeding times hindi kumikita. That is not uh, a replicable program ideal for farmers. It will be very frustrating. Minsan ka lang kumikita, susunod, puro cent lang na tayo. Hindi ko tayo, uh, well, we don't have the the, the leisure of uh, good capital to do that, no? to have same mistakes all the time. So it has to be replicable. The farming program must be cost efficient. The investment that you put in should earn well. Tandaan nyo po, tumataya po tayo rito ng pera na pinaghirapan natin. Dapat kumita ng maganda ang pera ang inilaan nyo. The flock must be feed efficient. Always remember, tandaan nyo po, 70% of your farming cost is feed cost. The money you invest on the feed should be compensated to you by a highly productive chicken. Example po natin, 
sa mga layer types natin, 280 eggs per hen per cycle. The, the chickens, the hens will start producing at four and a half months uh, production. For a chicken meat supply, uh, supply from the harvested in cell types, at 60 to 70 days with 1.1 to 1.5 kilos live weight. Hindi pwede na 60 to 120 eggs per year ka lang to be uh, properly compensated with your farming sa mga layers. Hindi rin pwedeng abuti ng 6 months bago tayo magkarni ng 1 kilo ng manok. Kasi po, malulugi ang negosyo mo sa dami ng ipapakain mo na feeds at sa oras na hinihintayin mo na maibalik sa iyo ang pera ang invest mo doon. So, madapat meron kang uh, uh, cycle na mas mabilis at mas productive. The priority here is the farmer. Above all. So, the farmer has to get good returns sa gagawin yung farming. The chickens must be uniform in production. All chickens of the same batch should give performance with nearly the same production result. Ibig sabihin po niyan, hindi pwedeng sabog-sabog ang timbang o ang laki ay iba-iba o ang, ang production ng itlog o karne ay paiba-iba. Merong good producer, may bad producers, may time na paiba-iba, on-off. So these things uh, will have an effect on your farming profitability. Your products must be saleable. Hindi pwedeng produce tayo ng produce ng mga, mga itlog, manok o sisiyo na hindi naman maganda ang value, na halos ang presyo ay hindi profitable para sa inyo. So, pre-raised chicken meat and eggs boast of being value-added products and are always in high demand. Moreover, this program matches small to medium-scale farming enterprises. And so, your chicken should be producing with both the quality and the quantity uh, Considered. So, always in consideration ang kalidad na pinoproduce nyo at yung quantity. Hindi pwede nga ang mga egg production ninyo ay may maliliit, may malalaki, halo-halo. Dapat medium to large. Pakalawa, yung karne naman. Hindi pwede maraming payat. Meron namang okay ang timbang, meron malaman, may, may payat. Hindi pwede yun. Hindi pwede na maraming mag-itlog, pero maliit ang mga itlog at hindi mabenta. O kaya ay malaki nga ang mga itlog, pero kaunti o hindi sapat ang dami. So may mga varieties ng mga genetics na manok that matches the program that you have to do. No? All these parameters of a science-based program require good genetics. Bottom line ho lagi dyan, good genetics. No? It matches your farming program. Hindi ho pwedeng gusto nyo ng uh, maraming karne na ma-harvest sa mga layers na ma ma mahina ho mag-develop ng karne dahil ang layers po are match for egg production. At hindi ho pwedeng yung mga meat type uh, in a salt type ang gamit na sa paitlogin. Dahil po ang focus niyan are for meat production. Mahina po mga itlog ang mga meat type. Which is more important? The appearance and feather color or the productivity of the chicken? Dito po, nagkakaiba na ang ating mga priorities. Gusto ba natin yung magagandang manok na pwedeng uh, i-display o lagay sa ating mga uh, Facebook at sa ating sa mga magazines na parang mga model? O gusto natin yung produktibong chicken na makakapagbalik agad na magandang kita sa atin? A true science-based free-range poultry program should not be based on the appearance or feather color. The basis should be more on the productivity potential of the chicken to produce more eggs or more meat with less feed requirement. As we have said a while ago, 70% of your cost is feed. The appearance and feather should be secondary. This is the main purpose of genetic selection, to maximize the productivity of the chicken. Therefore, it is based on productivity and not on appearance. In the pre-range poultry program in the Philippines, 
commonly tinatanong lagi ang Rhode Island Red, no? RIR, is the main chassis of genetics for poultry production because of its robustness o yung kanyang kibay and dual capacity to be good meat and egg producer. So, kumbaga, siya yung main chassis ng production commonly, commonly, no? sa genetic programs ng poultry. RIR crossed with a brown or white leghorn would result in high producing egg layers. RIR crossed with bark limut rock. BPR po, hindi PBR. No? Dapat po, terms of preferences dati yung pare-pareho. Para nakikita po na ang ating mga customer na science ba yung ating programa. Bark limut rock. BPR. Road Island Red. Sussex and Andalusian Blue cross with BPR will produce dual purpose types also. Females for egg production and males for meat production. So, kumbaga sa spectrum ng productivity, nasa gitna po siya. Balance siya for egg production at balance siya for meat production. RIR cross with Cornish, otherwise known as Indian Game, Hampshire, and Orpington result in good meat producing chickens. So, ang nature po is always balanced. So, you have a good producing animal, which is uh, an RIR cross with Cornish, Hampshire, or Orpington, but it will not produce enough egg production as compared to the brown leg horns, which are high produced layers, uh, high producing layers. So, meron pong balance. So, makikita nyo sa spectrum na to, na merong extreme for egg production but less on meat, we have a balance which is the BPR cross with IRR, RIR, and Sussex and Andalusian, and also the RIR cross with Cornish which is more on the meat production side with less egg uh, being produced per year. BPR cross with BPR result in an elegant looking chicken but can give variating productivity results. So, example po nito ay yung dominant B853. It is a cross between a Rhode Island red male with a Rhode Island red female. These are autosexable. So, ibig sabihin po niyan na yung ating uh, breeder line uh, nasa ibabaw, once they uh, breed and uh, we produce a hatch of day-old chicks, malalaman natin ang male at female sa day-old pa lang. But you can only do this at the level of the parent stocks. Once you breed the ones below that, which are the offsprings, F1, it will not produce this autosexability. No? So, hindi ho siya pareho. Same with the Bart Primo truck dominant D109 cross with the Rhode Island, meron pong puti sa ulo yung lalaki. So, I'll try pagpisa pa lang, alam nyo na yung lalaki, alam nyo na yung babae. Okay, yung iba gagawin, siya shortcut, no? Go-cross yung mga F1 lines, magkakapatid po yan. And you will not get the accurate reading of an autosexable uh, chick from the level of F2. Hindi po nangyayari. Dominant D102 is a cross between a Rhode Island white female and a Rhode Island red male. Dito po, makikita natin na autosexable siya in terms of color of the feather. Uh, light yellow yung ating male at orange yung ating female. So, dito po makikita nyo na it is uh, autosexable at day old level pa lang. That secret to a successful fairy chicken farming simple lang po yan. It is very simple. Okay, ito lang po ang kailangan tandaan lagi, no? Sa program natin ito, no? Listen and follow instructions. That's number one. Number two, you do not need to reinvent the wheel. Hindi po kailangan mag-experiment ng mas magaling pa rito sa mga pinaproduce nating hybrids. Dahil masisira po yung inyong programa. You just focus and follow the template or the pattern that we recommend to you.
inbreeding, mixed breeding, cross breeding. Back cross breeding. Why are they not recommended? Ito po ang mga results kung bakit po. No? Uh, these are just uh, pictures of the different hybrids that uh, dominant CZ has. So para pong skin ng tao yan, iba-ibang kulay nila. But their productivity is almost similar. 99% similar. Because when there are no available performance records or pedigree records at tawag, no? So, ibig sabihin po nito, hindi po na-test yung kanilang abilidad or performances of productivity and feed efficiency of the, feed, of the stocks that you will use for breeding. You do not know what productivity to expect and you cannot make accurate projections on your program. So, pagka po hindi po na-test yung productivity ng inyong mga alaga, manghuhula lang po tayo sa lalabas. It will be a wait and see lang palagi. Halimbawa, kung kumuha ka ng RIR mula sa iba't ibang sources, hindi ka makakasiguro na pare-parehas ang productivity performance na ibibigay sa iyo. Kaya importante na certified at may production results from regular testings can be done by a legitimate testing centers. And we allow the genetic center in Czech Republic to do this for us kasi they do the regular testing and for the past 10 years, we have been importing the breeders. They have been quite regular in the results. So, as claimed po, nagpo-produce. Mahirap po yung meron tayong mga production na nagko-complain ng ating mga customers. Na iba-iba sizes, iba-iba ang mga productivity. At uh, ito po ay mga ka-epekto sa ating farming. Time proven with mixed, mixed breeding, in breeding, cross breeding, the uniformity required cannot be achieved resulting in variances in productivity, resulting in low profitability. As you go, lumiliit ang kita ng farmer. Naging less productive yung animal, mas marami kang reject, marami kang hindi maibenta, ma mas nahihirapan ng farmer ngayon at nanulugi siya in the long run. If you make a mistake in breeding, you have to go back to square one. For example, may mga farmers nakita ang ganda mga itlog, ang ganda magpulos ng karne, yung nakuha nilang resulta. Pag inulit uli nila yon, nagawin, nahihirapan siyang iproduce uli yon. So, nauubos ang oras ng farmer na mag-experiment na mag-experiment. At pagka may customer ka na, hihingi ng sandaan, dalawang daang heads, for their own production, customer na, meron ng pambayad, uh, willing ng uh, kumuha sa iyo, hindi ka makapag-supply ng volume na kailangan mo. Because the productivity is of question. If you, you lose money and time, and frustration start to set in, you lose your interest in farming, you stop and you shut down the farm. So, nangyayari po yan, nakita ko po. Kaya po wala kayong makikitang tumatagal sa negosyong to kung hindi tama yung genetics na gamit. Bigla na lang uh, close open ang negosyo. No? Mag-experiment na naman ng bago, mag-marketing na naman ng napakaganda raw ng kanilang alaga, napakaganda ng production, maya-maya nawawala na naman dahil nalulugi. Continuous inbreeding and mixed breeding will reduce the good, good traits, no? and amplify also the bad traits in the next generation. Lalabas na po dyan yung mga abnormal, high mortalities, yung nababansot, low egg production, no? delayed egg production, sa pagpisa pa lang marami ng patay, no? abnormalities during hatch, because highly related na po yung mga alaga natin. And this has been proven over and over again. Disease incidences, become high. Naging sakitin na dahil yung mga alaga natin, hindi natin matrace kung alin ang batch, halo-halo na sila, yung iba nag-harbor na ng disease, nagiging carrier na po. At yun po ang magkakalat ng sipon. Hindi nyo ba nahalata na after 3 to 6 months na kayo ay nag uh, nagmi-mix mix ng mga manok, later on lumalabas na yung sipon? Isang reason po yun, dahil po masyado tayong mahawak ng mga multi-age, na hindi naman productive. No? 
This results in wastage of feeds and animals, thus resulting in losses, money, and income potential. Simple lang po ang translation yan, tapo ng pera na wala ang kita. Pati customer po, nawawala rin yan. Good and consistent productivity and uniformity in genetics is the key to be sustainable and successful. Okay, we will show you a pattern, no? a breeding pattern that is being used by our genetic companies worldwide. So, ito po ay ginagawa sa mga commercial production ng uh, breeding and genetic companies sa buong mundo. Yan po, no? Ang uh, makikita nyo po dyan ay two sets, no? The A, B, and the C, D. No? Yan po, they are not related or very distant. This is just an example po. No? Siyempre, we use it for illustrations only. You have an AB line, which is the grand parent stock that will produce the parent stock male. Yan po ang pattern na ginagamit ng mga genetic companies. These are grand parent stock levels. So, yun pong mga magandang traits ng AB line, ilalagay po at ikukombine doon sa male breeder parent stock, while the CD line grand parent stock will produce the CD line which is the female parent stock. Yan po yung parent stocks. Hybridization through breeding is the time that you combine the good traits of the AB line male breeder parent stock and the CD line which is the female breeder parent stock Pagka po nag-breed yan, nag-mate, ang ABCD po ang lumalabas. Technical po yun sa genetics ABCD line, ano? which is the high breed level. So lahat po ng mga gandang traits ng lalaking uh, breeder, makukombine po sa mga gandang traits ng babaeng breeder. Importante yung inote dyan, sa ABCD line ng grandparent stock ay hindi po related. Napakalaki pong factor yon para po yung lumabas na high breed ay laging uniform. And these are brothers and sisters. So when you use this for breeding, they will be inbred already. That is why lalabas na po yung mga non-desirable traits ng ating mga F2s and F3s. So tawag po sa level ng ABCD line is the F1 hybrid level. Ang sistema po ito, hindi po pwedeng, ay, kukuha na lang ako ng grandparent stock mula sa, sa Mindanao, kukunin ko. Tapos, yung female ko naman kukunin ko sa Luzon, definitely, ni related to. Pag ginawa niyo po yun, pwede naman po yun. Pero ang resulta po ay magkakaiba lagi. Dahil hindi po na-test ang GP ninyo at parent stock ninyo. So, kaya po, lagi po magkakaiba ang resulta. And we will go back to the same questions we discussed earlier. Example po, parent stock, no? Just an illustration po na ginagamit natin dito. These are certified parent stocks, example po. Pagka po binread nyo silang dalawa, no? Ang lalabas po, F1 tawag dyan. So makikita nyo po rito, nag-iiba na yung hybridized na yung kulay niya. This combination of the ones that are produced from the parent stock. Ngayon po, sa F2, pag binrin nyo po yung magkakapatid na F1, nagkakasabog-sabog na po ang kulay niyan. Hindi lang po kulay, pati performance niyan, at inbreeding side effects of abnormalities. At pagka po naging F3 yan, makikita nyo halo-halo na mga kulay. Kaya po, pagka nagpo-post po yung iba sa Facebook, nalalaman na po natin kung naging F3, F4 na sila. Dahil po sabog-sabog na ang kulay. It is not a pattern already. And this also incurs differences in productivity, increase in high mortalities, abnormalities, and dwarfism. Eventually po yung mga alaga nyo when you continue with this breeding, meron ng percentage na marami na po yung mga bansot. Pinapakain nyo na marami, hindi lumalaki. O kaya nangingitlog po na kaliliit lagi, ayaw na lumaki ng eggs. Yan po yung mga side effects na. With Dominant ZZ, ang program po natin ay science-based. So, ibig sabihin po, we have a poultry production hierarchy ng Dominant ZZ. 
It is based on a genetic program of commercial poultry farming. So, yung pure lines po are uh, heritage pure lines from Europe and are selected for the productivity needs and color preferences of the farmers. Okay. Ang importante po rito, productivity ang priority. Secondary lang ang kulay. Kung baga, add-on lang po na advantage yung iba-ibang kulay nila. Selected pure lines for grandparent stocks. So, pinipili po mula sa pure lines ang na-test na nila na high producing, least feed requirements, robustness, uniformity, and color. It is important that these traits are na itatransfer sa offspring. Meron po mga traits na ilang porsyento lang na itatransfer sa offspring. At yung pong mga yon ay hindi ginagamit kaysa po doon sa nag-breed through o lumalabas yung uh, productivity yon sa grandparent stock breeding. So sa grandparent stock breeding, nire-replicate po ang mga pre-tested grandparent stocks from pure lines to produce the male AB line, yung diniscuss natin kanina, and female CD lines. The male parent stock line and the female parent stock lines are not related to prevent the issue of inbreeding. So from the GPS breeding, the parent stock breeding po naman ang mangyayari. So you have a a B male breeder that will mate with the C D female breeders that are non-related to produce the hybrid F1. Okay, bakit po F1 tawag? Filial 1 ang tawag po dyan sa genetic uh, term. The desirable productivity traits of both the male and the female breeders will be combined. So pinaganda, lahat ng mga ganda pwedeng magsama-sama dyan sa hybrid na yan. It is not 100% na lahat ng gusto mong traits maibigay ng manok. Kung hindi, marami ang mai-inherit mai ng mga F1. Then, once you breed the parent stocks, you have the F1 or final hybrids for table egg and meat production. Terminal line na po yan. Ibig sabihin po niyan, yung male po, gagamitin natin pang karne that will produce 1.5 kilos in 70 days while the sister female F1 starts egg production at 4.5 months and will produce 280 eggs for the next 12.5 months of age. Not for breeding because they are highly related. So, ang tinuturo po natin dito sa mga programang ito ay may pattern na. Susundin lang po natin and it will be very successful if you have a productive flock with you. Okay, ito yung ating next topic, which is the present poultry situation in the Philippines. So, after talking about parts of genetics, we are now going into the present poultry situation. Dapat kasi sa pagiging poultry farmer, updated din tayo sa information. Well-rounded tayo para alam natin yung tatahakin natin. Para hindi tayo parang taong naglalakad nang nakapiring ang mata nang hindi natin alam pupunta natin o malulubak tayo o madadapa tayo. Kailangan we have a clear cut uh, roadmap on what we will do with our production in our provinces. This is based on the Philippine Statistics Authority no? in the livestock and poultry sector inventory. Uh, based on October 2019 to December 2019, it is found out that the total inventory of chicken was estimated at 178.26 million birds sa buong Pilipinas. No? And it is a combination of the white commercial chicken with the native improved chicken. Although nag-drop po yung ating mga native improved or colored chicken to about 80.68 million birds in 2020. So malaki pa rin po yun, ano? 80 million birds in 2020. And this inventory is car carried through, uh, through up to year 2021. So, hindi po natin alam, wala pa tayong forecast for 2021. So, more or less, you have a general idea kung ilan po yung ating uh, native improved and colored chicken production sa buong Pilipinas. Bumaba po yan from 2019. Uh, 2018 to 2019, dahil po nagkaroon po ng mga issues ng mga uh, Newcastle disease outbreaks. So, mga ND outbreaks po na naka sa productivity ng mga alaga natin. 
if you can recall the history uh, way back in 2019. As of January 1, 2020, the total inventory of chicken in the Philippines is 178.26 million birds. At ang porsyento po nito, 45.28% against 54.72%. Sino po ang naghati ng market na yan? Ano? Yung 80.68 million are from native and improved native which includes dominant and farm colored chicken farmers from uh, small and medium scale farmers. So ito po yung mga 80.68 million buong Pilipinas po yan ano? sa as of January 2020. Habang ang 97.58 million are from big integrators, medium to large scale independent breeder companies in the Visayas and Mindanao. So ito po yung hatian ng market ng buong chicken production sa buong Pilipinas. Makikita po natin na hindi po basta-basta lang ang native or improved native chicken or color chicken market sa buong Pilipinas. It is a significant chunk of the inventory of chickens in the Philippines. Ito po yung uh, detailed inventory, no? Makikita nyo po rito na with the native and the colored chicken, uh, native improved chicken, the 80.3 million birds in 2018 and then the 83.34 million birds in 2019 and then the 80 points. 6 million birds in 2020 inventory. No? That is the 45.28% contribution of the native or improved native in the Philippine poultry market. Okay. So, ayan po yung mga pictures. Halo-halo, iba-iba. Native, uh, improved native, colored chicken, dominant CZ, all of them contributing to this native and improved uh, inventory of the Philippines for uh, uh, chicken in January 2020. Ito po, mas detail, no? Sa ating native improved, makikita po natin sa buong Pilipinas, 80.6 million birds no, ng 2020 inventory. Ang mga nagpo-produce po ng 3 million, imagine 3 million birds inventory per province. Okay, makikita niyo po rito kung ano ang mga significant provinces that are contributing to this uh, total native improved chicken inventory. 6% of it is coming from the Ilocos region, which is 4.8 million. Cagayan Valley, which is 4.2 million. 6.5 million po ang Central Luzon. Mimaropa region, which uh, contributes 3.8 million. Bico region produces 5.5 million. Western Visayas produces the biggest which is 12.4 million. Central Visayas comes in uh, third with 8.6 million. Sambuanga Peninsula with 4.6 million. Running second po is 9.6 million in Northern Mindanao. And then double region, which uh, produces 6.6 .6 million. It also shows to us, alin ang malakas kumain ng native chicken or improved native chicken sa Pilipinas. These are more, uh, it doesn't mean na yung lugar nyo ay mahina, mahina ang production. For example, Calabarzon, eh walang market. Meron din po. Kaya lang po, not as, as big and aggressive as the, these, these uh, areas. So, Sargent produces 4.9 million. So, ang mga points to note, Western Visayas and Central Visayas, okay, Dabo Region and Northern Mindanao. So, dyan po talaga Visayas and Mindanao ang ating market ng colored or improved native or Northern Luzon or Southern Luzon ang makikita ng market. Metro Manila po talaga is a white chicken commercial market. What does this translate to? Ano ibig, ibig sabihin po nito? No? The potential of improved native or colored chicken farming in the Philippines is getting bigger. 
lumalaki po yung market. Marami na ho ang mga sa Visayas Mindanao because of population consumption, lumalaki po yung ating na uh, uh, consumption nito and as well as the inventory, there's a demand. It is a demand driven, no? Demand driven ng program. The market matches the capability of the farmers. Yung pong ating colored chicken program, free range program, madali pong gawin pagka nagpalo ho tayo ng program. And then, uh, simple and not too technical. Small and medium scale farmers have a big, big chance to earn well. So, ang laki po ng chance na ating kumita. And uh, because uh, hindi po kailangan na uh, corporation malaki, kung malaki ang kapital, to be part of this. So, it is a simple program that you can do in your provinces. You have an ace up your sleeve. Ibig sabihin po, you have good quality genetics. So, hindi po kayo uh, trial and error uh, method, no? Stop and go method, kung hindi you have an ace of good quality genetics. Hindi nyo na kailangan magtimpla. Timplado na. Kailangan po ganun ang programa para nakapokus kayo sa productivity and market ng inyong produkto. Target markets are provincial consumers and tourists. So we have local imported tourists. Later on, sa so Awan and Diyos, ay mag-improve further pa. This program is ideal for first-timers, no? whichever sector of society you are from. Retirees, OFW, balikbayans, and seafarers. Those looking for additional income, even for students and professionals. Basically, para sa lahat po. It is a simple program that anybody can do parents chicken production. Small capitalization for a startup program. Pwede ho kayo magumpisa sa maliit na, na capital and you roll it up. Maging sustainable later on. Relatively fast setup and turnaround time. Mabilis pong turnaround ng inyong program. In a year time, you can do multiple grows. And if you do the program properly, you can do multi-ages with the proper biosecurity and knowledge that you need to make it uh, more uh, sustainable. No religious barriers and limitations. Yan po ang lamang ng chicken. Uh, young and old eat chicken. The young especially loves chicken. And then it does not have any religious barrier whatsoever. Okay, so we always do a program that is God-centered. Okay, basic foundations of a successful parents poultry farmer. This is always what we teach our farmers. They have these disciplines, no? Importante po ito to be successful then. Yung inyong pagiging ready sa programang ito, ito po yung mga foundations na kailangan ninyo. You have to have ethics. Hindi po yung nanunulot tayo ng mga customer, naninira tayo ng kapwa farmer. Kailangan po, we have moral ethics with us no, to do the, do the program. We have core values. No? Naintindihan natin na yung kapwa natin, we respect them, and we, they also have families to feed, and we respect them, and we help them, encourage them. Social contribution. We have to pay things forward. Pagka po kayong naging successful dito sa system na to, sana po ma-share nyo sa kapwa. No? Hindi po yung tinatago yung sikreto, hindi po yung tingin nyo sa iba ay kompetensya. Always remember, ang produkto nyo po kinakain araw-araw. Nauubos po. So the technology, once we have that and good genetics, you can make a good social contribution to your provinces. No? You can have even uh, farmer friends sa inyong grupo, sa inyong provinces to push forward the program in your province. You should have accountability. Iwag po yung gagawa ng shortcut. No? Pinipake yung mga genetics, pinipake po yung farming, tapos hindi nyo na makita afterwards. So, mag-iingat din po tayo at magtulungan tayong huwag mangyari ito sa mga susunod na panahon. We should be accountable to what we produce. Hindi po yung nagbebenta tayo na sinasabi nating organic, sinasabi nating antibiotic free, eh yung pala gumagamit tayo ng antibiotic mula day one. Iwasan po natin yan. Integridad, kailangan po natin yan. 
para po makilala kayo sa inyong lugar, you should have the integrity na as a person, as a respectable person. And it can be done through your actions and deeds. Community building. So we always encourage you to form groups in your area that will supply a very big market. Pagka po kasi maliit lang ang ating production at we want to go to restaurants, to institutions, to hotels, ang hirap mong pasukin yan. Pero kung magkakagrupo po kayo, maganda ang quality ng inyong production, using good genetics and good program, you will have a more successful approach on uh, supplying your localities or your provinces. Okay, next naman po tayo, types of farming in the color chicken category. We have the native chicken farming. No? We have certified F1 for pre-range nasal meat production. Ito po yung pangkarne na inasal type ang tawag namin. Inasal is a term that is actually rooted from the word inasar which is roasted. No? So roasted. So ito yung uh, bago magkaroon ng white chicken commercial production. Ito po yung uh, mga genetics na ginagamit ng panahon ng Kastila na ginagamit po pang ihaw ng mga manok. Certified F1 chicken for free-range table egg production. In comparison po sa inasal meat, all females po ang ating egg production. No? Mga hens po yan. Ang inasal po natin are all males. So they are fast growers. They are more meat. No? They, are, uh, they consume faster and convert it to meat faster. Certified breeder producing certified F1 day old chicks. So ito yung mga certified breeding stations nationwide. So ito po ang objective nito ay makapag-supply ng good quality chicks sa inyong probinsya. Actually, this is very recommended in the provinces. You will know later why. Certified ready to lay. So ibig sabihin po niyan, Mag-grow kayo ng mga layer types and then you grow them at 4 months and then part of your uh, population you will use for your own personal egg production while the remaining part will be sold na meron naman kayong kitang maganda. Ready to lay po which is about 3.5 to 4 months of age before lay. Ready to breed. So meron po tayong mga farmers kumukuha ng mga uh, mga volume ng breeders that we import and then they grow it and part of that they use for their breeding station while the others they sell it as a ready to breed certified breeders. Now these ready to breeds also produce the quality they owe chicks if it is done and managed properly. Certified ready to range in a cell type which is basically 21 to 30 days old na vaccinated. So, may mga first-timers po tayo, hindi pa sila marunong mag-brooding, mag-growing. So, ito po yung opportunity nila na makapagbenta ng bakunado na. Importante po, bakunado. Para makakontribute tayo na bumaba ang mga incidences ng sakit sa ating lugar, sa ating probinsya. Now, this is the Philippine native chicken farming. No? As reported by the Agriculture Magazine, based on the purified native chickens from the different regions of the country. Ang tawag po dyan ay mga Bolinaw, Darag, Banaba, Camarines, Oloanon, at Paruacan. It is uh, developed by the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Animal Industry, MSRPDC, which is spearheaded by our good friend, Dr. Rene Santiago. So, sila po ang nag-propagate itong system na to for your uh, native chicken production. They lay at around 5 to 6 months of age, number of eggs produced are 60 to 100 eggs, and the egg weight is about 40 to 45 grams. We have our certified F1 in a salmi type. So ito po yung kulay niyan, pagka po uh, malaki na sila and ready for harvest. No? Makikita niyo po different colors, but the productivity and uniformity ay halos magkakapareho. This is the male F1 hybrid offspring of dominant CZ, certified parent stock. So, pagka po parent stocks ang hawak ng isang breeding station, certified F1, ito po yung mga anak na lalaki na ipoproduce niyan. 
it's about 1.5 kilos in 60 days only. So, even at the level of free range, nakikita sa picture, uh, pwede po siyang mag 1.1 kilos in 60 days. Of course, you will still feed it with good quality commercial feeds. 1.45 kilos in 70 days. So, sa provinces po, the 1.1 kilos in 60 days, yun ang gusto ng iba dahil talaga pong pagka natikman nyo, lasang-lasang na provincial chicken, pangalawa po, may laman na, malambot pa rin, at madali pong ihawin. At 1.4 kilos live at 70 days, ito na po yung mga pangahin natin, pang-roasting natin, na pwede sa mga birthdays, piyestas, no? at handaan. FCR po niyan ay 2.8. Ideal for provincial chicken market. Meat fiber is firm, not tough, hindi po matigas. May laban po konti pag kinagat nyo, pero malambot pa rin, hindi po siya matigas. Can be farmed in high volume with a fast turnover, making the farming program sustainable. Sa mga ibang modules po, sa module 2, we will teach you how to do the rotation. Uh, that in, in one year's time, you can do three to four harvest in a year, which makes it sustainable. So, kung nakita po kayo regularly, may income pong darating. At yung pong market nyo ay masaya din sa nakukuha nilang product. Newly hatch po and selected males na mga inasal type. Makikita nyo po may patak na puti sa ulo. Yan po ang nag indicate na pagka-certified ang breeders ninyo, they will produce males with that marking on the head. So, yan po ay binabox and ship nationwide. Now, if you have a local producer, which is a certified breeder farmer, mag-inquire po kayo sa kanila. Certified F1 in a salt type, given proper brooding. Importante po ang brooding. Tinuturo po namin sa module 2 yan. Kapag ka maganda po ang brooding ninyo, you have a successful Result of productive in cell types and layer types. Free range with 10% supplementary feeding. So you can feed it with uh, malunggay, trichantera, black soldier fly, mealworms, etc. Pati po yung mga gulay at kutas na i-madal, uh, kumbaga halos ma mabubulukta na malinis pa rin, pwede pong gamitin as a supplementary feed at 10%. Solid, live weight at about 1.17 as evidence po in 60 days. So, makikita niyo po dyan, 60 days, binibenta per kilo at 200 to 220 per kilo. So, kita na ho ang farmer. And then, yung mga bumibili po sa probinsya, ganyan po ginagawa. Prepared and roasted like a true authentic provincial chicken. So, makikita nyo dyan na talagang piniprepara na sariwa at makikita nyo po yung resulta na malaman po. No? And it is very, may tanglad po. No? It is very good sa mga handaan, sa mga piyestas, birthdays, and other occasions. Okay, makikita naman natin dito yung mga tested na. Yun yung sinasabi namin pedigree tested. Dahil at 60 days, or 8 weeks of age, you have 1.1 kilo. Now, if you grow them better or faster on a cooler climate, mas mabilis po siya mag-gain uh, ng weight. At uh, about 70 days, they are, are approximately 1.5 kilos of uh, weight. No? So, it is actually, makikita nyo, meron tayong uh, template na, na table that you can use as a guide to grow it. Ibig sabihin po niyan, meron po tayong manual na pwede ninyong gamitin as a guide as compared to mix mix chop soy chicken no na hindi natin alam kung anong lalabas bukas o makalawa no o kaya fruit salad chicken halo-halo ang lahi no hindi iwasan po natin kasi oh, you are investing money you are investing feeds you are investing on the genetics dapat po you get the results all the time with these results no? Yung po namang certified F1 layer type, no? This is the female F1 hybrid of spring. So, ito yung mga babae. Starts laying at four and a half months, no? 
assuming the flock is raised based on the standards, properly fed and healthy. Hindi ho natin magagawa yan kung ang pinapakain lang natin ay sitaw, kalabasa, no? hindi ho lalaki yan, darak, hindi po sila lalaki. Kailangan po properly fed and healthy. From 4 and a half months to 17 months, will produce 280 eggs per hen. So that's a 1 to 1.1 years of production per cycle. So magsa-cycle ho kayo ng sisiw to load your batch 1, batch 2 to have a regular supply of eggs. If raised well, it can reach 90% productivity. Ibig sabihin po, pagka po maganda yung inyong uh, pag-alaga, pagpapakain, they can reach 90% in a day for a span of 14 days. Ibig sabihin po niyan, 90, 91, 92, 90, pabalik-balik dyan, within that 90 range for 14 days. No? Hindi po habang buhay, 90%. So, uh, pero it can reach that percentage, 90% for 14 days. Mostly medium to large eggs, hindi po maliliit ang mga itlog nito. So yung mga consumers po, happy makakuha ng mga gantong klaseng itlog. Kasi po malalaki at komple sariwa, no? At uh, kumbaga, hindi siya maliliit ang mga yolk sa loob. Uniform, robust, and productive. These pictures are coming from our farmers. No? And we would like to thank them. Thank you very much. Yan po, uh, when you brew them, same program, when you grow them, makikita po ninyo yung mga growers dito sa upper part ay mga pinapainom ng mga probiotics. No? They seldom use antibiotics, so you have a very clean produce all the time. Then, kung ano po yung sobra sa inyong farm, kangkong, malunggay, no? mga prutas, pwede nyo pong ibigay sa kanila as supplementary feeds at around 10% inclusion. So, you enjoy your farming, no? You enjoy your farming as you earn. Napakalaking bagay po niyan. That you have good food and good uh, farming business. Ito po, makikita nyo. Kumakain ng nyog, no? Then, some farmers uh, provide them with uh, with uh, herbal uh, or uh, flowers na mga edible, edible flowers na nagpapadagdag ng tingkad ng kulay ng yolk pagka binuksan nyo po yung egg, ano? binrek nyo yung egg. It will make it more uh, yellow or orangish. Meron po mga malunggay na binibigyan, no? And then saging. May mga farms na maraming excess na saging. Binibigyan po sila. Ito po yung sa ilalim may papaya at yung iba po yung mga dahon, sahan ng mga saging, ano? Uh, they can give that as a supplementary feedstock. Hindi rin po pwede na yan, eh, yan lang ang pakakain ninyo. mag po ang production nila. They need the specific amino acids, proteins that they need to produce eggs and to grow properly. Nakikita po natin dyan, makain po talaga sila ng grasses. They need the grasses for their digestion and it really helps them to produce good quality eggs. No? Yan po, no? At babalikan po kayo ng malalakas ng mga itlog, ng mga hens. No? Yan po, makikita nyo lahat ng mga nest, kompleto po, may laman lahat. Kahit po mainit ang lugar, they can still produce. So, every day po, once they start laying eggs, kompleto po, meron na po kayong cash crop na tawag. Ibig sabihin po niyan, every day, makakonvert na yung eggs sa sales, sa farm pa lang, farm gate pa lang. Pinagkakaagawa na yung itlog na pinaproduce ng mga hens ninyo. Because, pag binabalikan na kayo ng customer, ibig sabihin po niyan, ay sariwa, masarap po yung produce na ginagawa niyo sa inyong farm. So, very important po niyan. And, this is just a sample packaging. Yung po mga nag elevate na sa level ng mga nagbebeta na sa mga groceries, supermarkets. This is one sample of the of the recyclable uh, uh, egg carton. And then uh, you can market it properly as what you claim. Because you have happier hands and tastier eggs from free-range eggs. No? Authentic free-range egg po. Yan po itsura ng sariwa. 
So, matutuwa po yung ating mga anak kainin yung mga uh, eggs na pinaproduce. And you can uh, do other other uh, recipes of these eggs. For those who are interested in the continuing comprehensive education, please PM us at Dominant Asia Pacific. So, we can provide you all the information needs that you have to go to get. No? Please include your name, complete name, so phone number, occupation, city, and province. Why do we need breeding stations in the provinces? Napaka-importante pong uh, part ng program ang having an existing breeding station on a per-province basis. Uh, these are the reasons why. There is a big demand for certified F1 dominant CZ day-old chicks in the provinces. We need to prepare a provincial-based self-sustaining breeding station to secure the local demand for chicken meat and eggs. And uh, we have already created a program for you and actually promoted on a lot of provinces already. Uh, we've been touring the rest of the Philippines for a long time, for the past three years already, trying to create the demand and uh, encourage farmers to do the program so that it will be sustainable. Every province needs to have it, its own local source of robust, productive, uniform, and affordable day-old chicks, and not to be dependent on centralized sources and on whatever can only be allocated for the province. This has been our present situation with the lockdown issue has already proven that uh, we really need to do something about this that uh, per province can sustain its uh, poultry needs while uh, while issues of lockdown is uh, taking place it has also been seen in uh, the issues of asf african swine fever as well as bird flu issues last year when they had to lock down the whole of luzon we need to be ready for this. Transport cost of chicks is very expensive and will continue to rise. After these issues of COVID and uh, the lockdown lifted, definitely you'll expect some recoveries of businesses. And the one of the business, the transport business, will be recovering, try to recover the, the losses that they incurred along the way. And it will be entailed to the farmers and it will affect production lines. Once we do transport, it will be very expensive. Fresh day-old chick is a big plus in the productivity of animals because a fresh day-old chick with less stress of uh, transport, stress of waiting in the airports and bus travel, travel time, etc. will be uh, reduced, greatly reduced, and the uh, the positive side of that will be a more productive animal because we got the stocks fresh. We don't have issues of transport mortalities, etc. If you have your provincial breeding stations within the area of about 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers around you, we need to prepare for zonal approach against bird flu or other uh, uh, outbreaks in poultry. Uh, in case one, one province have a problem, the other provinces can assist the, the affected uh, province and the contamination will not be uh, on a bigger scale since it is being controlled by an internal program of uh, per-provincial supply of chicks, chickens and eggs. When a province has its own breeding station, you can create a template or a customized program for poultry sustainability in the provinces. And it will become easier for you to create a highly sustainable logistic production program that is based in a provincial 
reading program in your area. Why do we need to reading stations in the provinces, no? Every province should be able to stand on its own in terms of food sufficiency when crises of any nature arise. And as we have seen, food is the priority right now. This program can help reduce crime rate, delinquency in our youth, and poverty in our provinces. Why? Mainly because... Uh, people, especially kids, no, after coming in from school, they have things to do that are farm-based and they can take care of chickens along uh, in their backyard. Uh, one, one mayor in Bacolod, uh, which I had a chance to inquire, why, why mayor do you uh, buy uh, uh, breeders for your uh, area, for your uh, municipality he answered me that uh, the main uh, positive effect of having your own uh, breeding station is that the kids go straight to home they tend to their animals and they have less delinquencies and even help reduce crime rate in their locality this is the value of having chickens when the kids come home they have a chance to look after their egg producing hens or their uh, uh, meat producing uh, broilers. No? And this is one opportunity of having a breeding station in your locality or the province. This program will provide income opportunities to our OFWs and seafarers when they finally return to their motherland for good. A salute to our modern day heroes. No? Saludo kami sa inyo, sir, uh, and ma'am. No? It has been very challenging for us, uh, both abroad and here in our, in our country. But in, in spite of this situation, yung priority nyo, yung family ninyo, you have kept the Philippines afloat in terms of your remittances, in terms of your uh, uh, contribution to our economy. So we are really thankful for that. Ma'am and Sirs, mga bagong bayani ng ating uh, bayang Pilipinas. Thank you po. And this is one opportunity for you if you want to do poultry production in your locality. No? Having a breeding station. We have already some testimonies from OFWs who have stayed for good and started their breeding program or grow out program within their provinces. It is very critical at this time to reorient and encourage the next generation to stay in their provinces and engage in farming. We have seen our, our youth uh, leaving our provinces, going to the metropolis, going to Metro Manila, urban centers, no? and uh, the farm lots are not uh, being uh, maintained or not producing. This is not... Uh, a local issue but a worldwide issue in the agricultural side and we need to give some incentives for our uh, professionals youth and uh, the young uh, newly grads to really reconsider doing their uh, uh, farming through this poultry production it has good uh, profit opportunities that you don't need to leave your families to have a good income the worst thing if you are out of your country or out away from your family is the time that you spend alone and uh, maybe with this program it will reduce this problem of uh, of uh, OFWs going out from the country the objective is always produce local and eat local we have to refocus, we have to reformat our programs. That is why I've seen in the African swine fever issue that uh, the uh, piggeries or the swine farms are more focused of sending their their uh, uh, pork to Metro Manila, to urban centers, and uh, that should not be the case. It has to be the locals 
that will be consuming the local produce. That is the main priority. If you focus more on sending out food outside, once there is a lockdown, this effect happens. And this will entail great losses for the farmers if they focus more on uh, producing uh, in, and taking uh, the you know, opportunity of uh, uh, sending uh, agricultural products far and beyond their capability. No? Also, I always encourage, let's put a second look on, uh, on producing and eating local and uh, not to be so much uh, focused on the problems of exports. No? Uh, we should learn how to take care of our farmers, our Filipinos first before looking at export as a business potential. We, we, we push people so much with the export that we have farmers going hungry into the poverty level that we forgot that we need to prioritize these farmers first before taking advantage of the business opportunity and the money outside. Right now, we are taken aback by this situation with the COVID-19 and uh, it has affected everything. Even your orientation of sending or exporting products. Let's take care of our Filipino kababayans first. The ultimate goal is food security in every province nationwide. That's it. Without any question, we should reorient orient our programs. We should cut out the traders and let the farmers supply the locality. Lastly, we need breeding stations which help and create character building towards nation building. I've seen farmers toil their lands, uh, grow their animals just for the sake of having a, a small profit, a low income, and they tend to reduce themselves into nothing because we are so focused on least cost, cheap products, that farmers have become already machines rather than a person. With these breeding stations, which you help your uh, localities consume eggs and meat, chicken eggs and chicken meat, uh, it will help in the character building because you put back the pride of producing your own product and let your kababayans consume or buy these products. That is one big step towards nation building. We recommend certified breeding stations in every province in the Philippines. We are trying to create a sustainable free-range poultry program nationwide and providing food security and good and stable income in the provinces. Balik tayo sa probinsya. Let's help our kababayans. Let's help create our own businesses in our provinces and have a sustainable food security program for each province. Dominant Asia Livestock Genetics, together with the Philippine Smallholder Poultry Farmers Association, would like to invite you to move into through this direction of creating sustainable poultry programs per province. What is a certified station, breeding station, or a certified breeder farmer? It is a provincial-based breeding station with certified parent stocks, breeders, and have completed the requirements to be eligible. So very important that you follow the requirements of being a certified breeding station. If you follow the program, we will assist you and endorse your farm to your provincial market. So it is important that we help each other. Not uh, just do whatever you like with a template or with a genetic program, but follow it carefully because everybody will benefit from it. The focus is more on selling certified F1 hybrid chicks for the local demand in your province. So uh, you are focused more on selling F1 chicks. Once you hatch them, you already have orders and you can distribute it in your province. Advocating free-range chicken farming in your province, providing certified F1 chicks to committed farmers, and encouraging your community to consume healthy alternative eggs and meat. 
So, may advocacy ka na, you still have healthy products, fresh products. Once you tasted the uh, uh, fresh free-range chickens and eggs, you can see the big difference of why you should try them regular on a regular basis on your table. You are provided with the opportunities of multiple sources of income if you are a breeding station. The potential earnings of a breeding station. No? You have a sale of F1 female chicks as layer type for table eggs. So you will be selling uh, day old chicks that are female which you can already um, uh, differentiate the males from the females. So you have an opportunity to sell premium female F1 chicks. Sales of F1 male chicks for in a sal type production. It matches the demand in the locality of provinces where they prefer uh, more of the provincial type chicken rather than the commercial type chicken. Sales of properly raised ready to lays. Ready to lays are four to five months old that are being sold by farmers properly vaccinated, well taken care of as a premium no? for people who would like to start on a faster level by uh, purchasing RTLs. Sales of predator range, this means that it's about 30 days old, properly brooded and vaccinated. So you reduce the mortality risk of uh, brooding and growing them until 30 days old. Sales of free range eggs by setting up your own free range egg production, which means that you will keep some of your F1 layer chicks uh, and then grow them for free-range egg production. Therefore, you have the lowest cost to produce. Sales of live or dress full or cut-ups in a sal free-range chicken meat by setting up your own free-range farm. So if you produce uh, meat type in a, in a sal meat types, you are have getting the lowest cost to produce since you are the breeder center or breeding station in the area. Set up your own chicken rotisserie business and you can sell your own lechon manok, your own brand. Imagine, I, I know a lot of farmers have this, uh, this dream of having their own lechon manok. And uh, the branding system has been seen in the provinces and I've seen farmers doing it. And I can say that it is sustainable because you have a regular supply of F1 male in a south type chicks to produce the lechon manok. Sales of ready to breed. The concept here is that, for example, you need uh, 50 uh, parent stocks, 50 females, but you order around 75 females. You grow the 25 to sell as certified ready to breed at five months old. So that is also an opportunity for you to earn as long as you fix and prepare your, your, uh, your housing feeding program properly. Seminar earnings. You have the opportunity to train and teach your uh, kababayans in your provinces. So I hope that together with the Department of Agriculture, we can do some training programs together and uh, you will be the facilitator or the main speaker for this program since you are doing the full breeding station cycle by yourself. So this is one of the possible seminar earnings that you can get. Sales of cows. So, what does a cow mean? This is the the spent hen or the hen that produces at a low, very low level. These are residual income resources that you can get once you sell them at an age of about uh, close to two years old. You can sell them at seventy-five to one fifty per kilo, depending on the area, depending on the demand, and uh, also um, uh, this can. Uh, uh, give you an additional source of income. Uh, I can assure you that the taste and uh, tenderness of cows is for uh, from dominant is very good. No? Ch sales of chicken manure as a, as a residual income. Since you can convert them as fertilizers, you can sell them as an organic um, fertilizer on a per bag, they sell it on a per bag or per kilo basis. 
So this is an additional source of income for you if you have a breeding station. Create your uh, vegetable farm alongside with your free-range chicken farm. Establish a farm-to-home distribution. The key word is uh, farm-to-home distribution. It is basically you uh, selling uh, chickens, breast chickens, eggs, together with your uh, uh, backyard grow of papaya, no, dahong sili, chili leaves, uh, ginger, lemongrass leaves, etc. and garlic. So uh, your customers will buy a box of uh, chicken with the vegetables already and some fruits if you have the fruit bearing ones in your in your garden and this can be a package that you can sell to your customers nothing beats fresh produce this is a schematic template of uh, how to go around the program or how to go uh, or the process of understanding the program better no so from the czech republic which is the dominant cz which produces the certified parent stocks. We import the certified day olds uh, two to three times a year. It is quite unfortunate that we had to hold uh, over the, the importation of a first batch because of the lockdown, but hopefully it will be continuing soon by June or July. Then you supply the certified uh, breeders to your breeding farm customers or the breeder farm customers will Will uh, the dominant Asia? Sorry, dominant Asia distributes to breeder farmers nationwide. So from the north of Luzon to the south of Mindanao, it can be transported as day old, and it will be cheaper to transport since they are day old. And then they will be brooded, grown, and uh, allowed to produce eggs at about five five months old for breeders, and uh, you can hatch your hatching eggs later on. Now, the hatching eggs, for example, we have two breeder farmers here, farm A and farm B. They will either uh, sell hatching eggs, they can sell uh, uh, F1 layer type or F1 in a cell type, and even uh, internal for internal production use no? for their own uh, free range layer egg production and meat production. You can also supply local government units, uh, other private institutions that uh, focus on livelihood programs for for the poor and the farmers and uh, and NGOs and cooperatives. So these are the opportunities you can get if you go with this kind of program. And they have been proven tested and you will see later on through the farmers that you will see certificates of farmers that it is uh, seen nationwide already as an effective way to do poultry production for the provinces. I always remind you again that uh, things are being done through a God-centered way. Our farming has to have a foundation and it has to be successful if it is a God-centered program and a family-centered program. Our commitment to our customers and community that we will pursue good eth uh, the ethics, good core values, no? social contribution. So you help pay back by teaching farmers do the proper way accountability uh, you should be held as accountable for the program that you do you don't do shortcuts you do things properly which means that you don't cheat on things on the process that you have to follow it uh, based on the program that is recommended to you integrity so uh, your business will not run if you have a, a uh, stop and go close open fly by night program i have seen farmers doing this trying to do hit and runs you know they tell people it's also dominant it's still the same no they're not you ask for their certificates ask for their breeding certifications community building create your own stakeholder group in your prov provinces in your localities so that the government will listen to you more and what and things that you need to improve your program especially the department of agriculture and uh, this is the way to do it it's a stakeholders program so that all more farmers will be benefiting from it ideally three to six breeding stations in every province nationwide 
depending on the profile of each province, land area, agricultural land available, uh, breeder farmer capabilities, raw materials. Like there are some areas that are uh, high in uh, corn produce, there are areas high in coconut produce, high in vegetable produce, etc., etc. And depending on the government and uh, cooperation and support. No, so this is one uh, schematics that uh, the DA, Department of Agriculture, or the local government can collaborate with you. You have a source of accredited uh, uh, stock of uh, breeders from Dominant Asia Livestock. You, we can supply you and then it is distributed to uh, an example. Here is our three, three breeding stations in the province so that we will have some... Uh, um, uh, developments on uh, all the sides of the provinces that uh, have a very good uh, touch base with the farmers. Example, uh, far breeding station A will have can supply uh, farmers uh, for meat, farmers supplying for eggs, so you sell them the, lay the layer types, the meat, the inasal types, some of them for distribution by the local government units, or cooperatives and then farmers producing ready to lay no? and then we have farmers producing 21 day olds ready to range so we are uh, upgrading the system through the backyard model to make the animals sturdier vaccinated disease free etc and this will prevent uh, a downturn on the disease situation in per area or it reduces outbreak situations because the chicks are fully vaccinated. The initial target is 55 community breeding stations nationwide, uh, assisting each other to fill in the demand. So for example, in, in Cebu, you know, we prioritize the breeder farmers there to capture the market or the demand. Now if they cannot uh, provide uh, through their own breeding station, they can uh, seek help or assistance from another breeding station near his area. And if that is not possible, they can uh, contact us as a direct supplier to supply the farmers who are in need of the certified F1s in, in that specific province. So that's the opportunity by a Nihan program, helping each other in the province so that everybody wins uh, in the total uh, scheme of things no so our target is a minimum of 20 55 community breeding stations nationwide it will not be limited to 55 and it can grow higher depending on the demand of the consumers or the demand of the of the families in the area to supply good fresh chicken meat and eggs how can you become a certified breeder certificate holder or certified breeding station of dominant CZ. Try to enroll in our seminar packages, either the online, which is the one that we prioritize right now due to the issues of lockdown, or the actual seminar later on, if it is possible to do actual seminars again nationwide. But through this online program, you can gain knowledge and you can have your own certificate. And uh, we encourage you in the meantime, well, since we have uh, plenty of time to spare to learn these online programs as you go. It is very important that you tool yourself uh, with the right knowledge so that later on when you do the actual practice, it will be easier. For farmers who are really serious in succeeding in the breeding uh, station program, enroll in our breeder packages. So the module 2 will be the seminar package for the actual seminar itself. And then the module 3 will be the breeding packages that we have for you in case you're interested to go into breeding station. You can acquire Dominant ZZ certified day old breeds from us. Now, uh, once you are backed up with the, the right knowledge, you can get the actual tools, which is the breeding, certified breeder day olds from us and you can start your program already. I can assure you that there are a lot of mentors in your provinces that will assist you so that you, both of you are benefiting, everybody's benefiting in the area. For order, is a minimum of 20 females and 2 males. So 
That means that's a one breeder set. We import two to three times a year, which means that you have 20 females and two males. Now, through the modules, we explain how you will earn the potentials, the cost profit, the how to market it, and how to link up in the area. So, uh, these opportunities are provided on the three different modules that you can go through. And in Interested, uh, for interested farmers, you can email us. Breeding stations are, are uh, separated from the regular orders of uh, F1 hybrids. And uh, they have to email through freerangepoultrybreeders at gmail.com. We will be providing you a reply of the guide on how to start up uh, your, how to order and start up your own breeding program. So, uh, as you wait for your stocks to come in, you prepare your housing, you prepare your, your facilities, and of course, prepare yourself and your mind to be fully engaged and learn well in the program. After 45 days of uh, receiving the reader checks, you can apply for the cert reader certificate by email. This means that you have to email us back with the requirements on freerangepoultrybreeders at gmail.com so that we will provide you what are the questionnaires you have to answer and the procedures on how you have grown your, your breeders. And from there, we can base on the, pro, the, the certificate that we will publish for you. This is 45 days after growing the breeder chicks. We will email back the requirements so you can fill them up, you know. We will send back after two to three day, three to four days, sorry, the soft copy of your certificate, duly signed, you know, and uh, it can, it will only be done through soft copies. We will post your breeder certificate in Facebook to assist you in marketing in your areas, which means that we can alert the F1 growers. The inasal and the layer type meat grower, uh, layer type egg growers in your area, uh, and uh, they can uh, provide uh, you the market that uh, they need for the day old uh, certified F ones. So you can uh, have the access in your locality of the market demand for day old chicks. This is one of the handouts that we send. Yeah, profitable and science-based poultry program, no? sustainable free-range breeding station to create a sustainable and profitable science-based poultry production in the provinces. A reliable farming program as livelihood and food on the table for families. Certified F1 of offspring of certified breeders. Provide good profitable farming. Can create business opportunity for farmers. Health and natural produce of eggs and meat for the consumer's family. A breeding station in the locality is needed to have a program that is sustainable. So you have a genetic stock program or a cycle in the area. Trial program of 20 breeders is a doable and sustainable way to start. Smallholder farming of eggs and meat participants. No? Small, private smallholder farmers will uh, will start up a program for egg and provincial meat produce uh, production commonly on a free range or natural farmer or even organic uh, farming practice no OFW seafarers retirees PNP retirees AFP retirees government retirees church schools doctors family enterprises etc cooperatives and NGOs who need to provide livelihood programs Central government through the branches of DSWD, Department of Agriculture, or Agri Techno branches. No? Local government units for livelihood programs. Free range certification centers. You can create your certification program by creating a traceability uh, login of those who are really practicing the right good animal husbandry practices on free range chicken production. You have the opportunity to create a produce local and eat local program. Better poultry products in your province, especially if you are far from areas or centers that are focused more by the, the big companies. You have a way to access good quality poultry products. 
target market are tourist spots, hotels, restos, health centers, and hospitals. Uh, later on, we expect a buildup of uh, demand due to uh, return of, uh, of uh, tourism in the Philippines and uh, also the farmers have uh, returned their own regular farming program and this will create a good demand in your area. Be their business farmers, no? which means that it is much for agribusinessmen who would like to have a broader source of business in the livestock sector. It is like uh, doing uh, uh, diversification in your farming. Can be a first-timer but with funds needed to operate and willing to learn. So even if you're a first-timer, you can do this in your locality. It is a safe investment if you do a 20 female, 2 to 3 male uh, combination or one set. Once you get the market already running, you can increase the volume of your parent stock depending on the demand. Willing to assist uh, the farmers, that is one requirement we would like to ask from you uh, that uh, you should be fulfilling is to assist farmers to grow them properly, vaccinate them properly, etc. So that uh, we have a healthy set of animals in your locality. It can be done by newbie farmers and uh, understands and has the patience to gradually develop his own market in his loca locality. So the layer types and the inner cell types. No? This is one example of a dominant CC breeder certificate. Now I will explain as we go the pointers on how to uh, differentiate a breeder certificate. Now, uh, always remember that this is based on, on the information provided in this certificate. No? For example, the arrival of the breeders. No? The farmer's name and his, uh, the name of his farm. No? For, as an example, Kenneth T. Nazareno was uh, given, given this certificate uh, for his Kanawan farm, which is found in the address, Barangay Binaritan, Sitio, Kanawan, Morong, Bataan. So, you know that if it is near your area, you can access and uh, contact him for the demands of your uh, the F1 chicks by just getting it from him rather than getting it from uh, far, far flung areas. No, The certificate is valid until August 24, 2021. So you know that that certification will only be valid until August 24, 2021. We expect that the breeders have already uh, passed their productivity by the time that uh, the validate, validity expires. No? Pedigree information is very important. So the hatch date was November 15 in Czech Republic and was, uh, was uh, airship here in the Philippines no, and uh, November 15 is the hatch date. The varieties that they got also explains the details of its productivity. For example, D102, 10 females and 2 males. D109, 10 females, 1 male. D853, 9 females and 1 male. D229, uh, 2 females and 1 male. D107, 10 females and 2 males. And an extra D149 male. So, it is quite impossible for, for the farmer to be producing 500 chicks at this set of uh, production. No? So, these things are a way to counter check if the pictures below the pedigree information matches what he is growing. So, uh, on per box of that, for example, the D109, the Rhode Island Red male crossed with the Bard Plymouth Rock female, will produce those chicks so you expect the chicks to be that color for D109 and will be an adult uh, or a cockerel with that uh, kind of appearance and a hen, a pullet with that kind of appearance for D109. So that is the idea. You are learning uh, in the process of discerning the true and the pasaway. In this business, even in this business, there are plenty of pasawais or there are people who are trying to do shortcuts. So you have to be careful. No? 
That is why the value of the dominant CZ breeder certificate is to protect the industry, the program, the community from uh, filterages, from shortcuts, from cheaters to penetrate into this kind of market and to preserve the industry itself. So if you want to contact the certificate owner, Kenneth Nazarena, example, you just contact him through Facebook. So you will have an easy access to the farmer. Lastly, but very important is use of the uncertified dominant ZZ parent stocks for breeding will automatically void the certificate. In case that you are producing not within this realm of production, this will automatically void the certificate. And through looking at the F1s that you produce, we will know if it's not really F1 anymore. It's already F3, F4, F5 through the color of the chickens that you will be producing. And this is very important. We need to preserve the, the veracity and the, the integrity of the certification. And we have uh, sets of farmers who are religiously following this program. Okay, so Dominant Asia Livestock Genetics is empowering the Filipino farmer. That is the main drive and the objective is to create a program that you are learned, you are educated properly and utilizing the right tools to do this program, thus empowering you as a Filipino breeder farmer or a grow out for free range eggs and meat. You understand the whole concept and you know that the roadmap that you're going to go through will have these kinds of advantages as well as challenges. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas, no? Mabuhay ka Pilipino, nasaan ka mang panig ng mundo. Kayang-kaya natin to if we stand by together. No, magtulungan lang tayo. You know, uh, as one, we we work as one. We help the smallholder farmers uh, together as one. We are preserving a community, an industry, a group of farmers who can have the opportunity to raise their family properly by just being organized. No, right now I am now uh, showing you our logo. No, Philippine Smallholder Poultry Farmers Association. This is a stakeholders group that uh, we are inviting people or farmers who would like to follow this kind of program. I am now organizing committed stakeholder farmers nationwide. Panahon na, this is the time, together we can do this. So that the government can hear us properly, what are the common things that we need to make this whole system or program uh, advance more towards benefiting uh, the farmers themselves and other farmers in the future. So we are now doing this invitation to be a, for you to be a member of the Philippines Beholder Poultry Farmers Association. Going back to our genetics, no, I would just like to show you the legitimacy of our program that we import certified breeders from uh, Czech Republic, Lasne Bodanek. Uh, in Czech Republic, no, our uh, genetic supplier of cer certified parent stocks and grandparent stocks owned by a geneticist named Dr. Milan Tiller, who is the owner of Dominant CZ. No? Ito yung Dominant Bar D459. Ito yung mga pure lines niyan. Ito yung ginagamit na combination para makuha sila ng grandparent stock. So ito yung pinakapuro sa pinakapuro sa lahat that they use, no? And this is the dominant. Ito yung itlog niya, ha? Ayan, ha? Oh, ito naman ang combination dominant D723. Okay? Okay? Rhode Island white, no? Together with the Rhode Island red combination. Oh, ano pa ba ipupuro niyan? Ha? Hanap tayo na hanap ng pure line. Yan na yun, yan na yun. Ha? And these are sources of grandparent stocks, no? Okay, there's Milan. <laughs> okay.
So going back to our poultry production hierarchy, as what you have seen in the video, uh, we have pure lines, and the selected pure lines are being used as grandparent stocks and tested. That's why we have a capitalized word tested, kasi po tinetest talaga yung productivity. And then they pull it to create the grandparent stock breeders, no? And from the grandparent stock breeders, we pull out the AB male breeder that will be mated to a CD female breeder of non-related lines to produce the hybrid F1. A desirable productivity traits of the male and the female breeders will be combined to create the hybrid. The F1 or the final hybrid will be for terminal use. Ibig sabihin, hindi na po dapat binibreed dahil magkakapatid na sila. No? Female F1 for meat, 1.5 kilos in 70 days and the sister or the female F1 for egg production four and a half months and will produce 280 eggs in 12 and a half months of age so from four and a half months a span of 12 and a half months more it will produce 280 eggs these are not for breeding because they are highly related already lahat po ng defects lalabas na uh, abnormalities during hatch abnormalities of uh, growth, abnormalities and productivity, and then high uh, high mortalities due to low immune system. No? Magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Ito po yung mga bagong important natin breeders. Nakikita nyo ni import namin para po sa magandang quality ng dominant layer types at pinasal type sa buong Pilipinas. Inaanyanyahan ko po ang ating mga bagong gusto maging breeder farmer pwede kayo lumawak sa amin para magkaroon tayo ng mga ganitong technology sa inyong mga probinsya. I'm inviting all the farmers who are interested to be breeder farmers in their provinces to have these uh, good quality stocks, proven stocks from the Czech Republic dominant CZ. If you have any uh, groups or uh, associations that might be interested to be, to be participating in this program, please let me know. You can email me at uh, Free-range poultry breeders at gmail.com. That's uh, free-range poultry breeders at gmail.com. And I'm willing to assist you in setting up a good breeding program for layer types and initial types in your uh, area. Thank you very much. These are the brooded uh, uh, day-old uh, breeders, Rhode Island Whites, and the D853, Rhode Island Red Females. These are the all females of the Bart Prima truck that you use for the production of D109, D149, and D107, utilizing three different types of male roosters. At the growing stage, you can mix them up. They can grow together without any problems of, uh, of uh, pecking order. They are very uh, docile and very friendly. Once they grow, you can put them in a colony of uh, Rhode Island Red Males, Dominant Blue Males, and Sussex Males Roosters a cross with the Bard Plymouth BPR, Bard Plymouth Rock po yun, ano? not uh, PBR, okay, Bard Plymouth Rock. This is the egg room, which we store the eggs for 7 days before uh, setting them in to the uh, incubators. No? We have our certificates of BIR and our accreditation from the Bureau of Animal Industry and uh, our mayor's permit so everything is above board these are the incubators that we invested into it is capable of holding 15,000 uh, hatching eggs uh, for growing or uh, 5,000 output per week production okay multi-stage incubator this is the incubator running we have hatching eggs inside the setter which uh, is for about uh, uh, 19 days 
Then we transfer it to the hatcher for three more days to create the to hatch the chicks, no? The eight five trees. No? And then we have the 109, 107, 149 in the hatcher. Okay? So, and they, they will be pulled out on day 21 and will be boxed accordingly per, uh, per group of uh, inasal type or layer type. Here in the, in the picture, you will see our layer type day old chicks that is being distributed nationwide. So, going back to our main flyer. As you can see, we can produce good quality eggs, adaptable animals for fearing chicken production that are healthy, that has good ability of producing a high volume of eggs, 280 eggs in, in starting at four and a half months. And at uh, about a year production, it will have create 280 eggs per hen per year. And then the inasal type, which is about 1.5 kilos in 70 days. This has been tested. These are uh, actual produce of the farmers. So these are real pictures of farmers creating programs and businesses in their localities. So you don't need to reinvent anything. It is already here. You just need to follow the program. Our certified breeder farmers nationwide. These farmers are invited to join the Philippines Moholder Poultry Farmers Association through the auspices of Dominant Asia Livestock Genetics. Our active breeder farmers in Luzon, specifically Northern and Central Luzon. These are the certified breeder farmers in that area. Greater Manila area and Southern Tagalog region. Bulacan, Metro Manila, Rizal, Cavite, Batangas, and Quezon. These are the certified breeder farmers. For those who have not received their uh, breeder certificate, kindly email us at freerangepoultrybreeders at gmail.com. Southern Luzon Region, Bicol, Mindoro, Palawan, Marinduque, and Romblon. Our active breeder farmers in Visayas. So for those farmers who forgot to email us back for their breeder certificate, kindly email us at freerangepoultrybreeders at gmail.com and we will send you back the requirements that you need. Other active breeder farmers in the Visayas. Our active breeder farmers in Mindanao. To all our community breeder station farmers, thank you for your great help in moving the advocacy forward, for believing in my program, and for your invaluable social contribution to our country. I remain steadfast and my commitment relentless and unabating in my pursuit of better lives for our countrymen through this farming program. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ako po ay taas pusong ipapasalamat sa mga naitulong nyo, naikontribute nyo. Ultimo yung mga pictures dyan, yung mga videos, yung mga tinulungan yung ibang farmers na maging breeding farmers. Salamat po. God bless you all. Sa mga backliners po ang tawag sa mga farmers marami pong salamat sa inyo ang ating mga pro farmer producers ng gulay, ng karne, ng isda no? 
At yung mga nagbabiyahe nitong mga ito para makarating sa mga siyudad, marami pong salamat sa inyo. Kayo po ang aming mga backliners. Okay, so critical factors to a sustainable and successful free-range poultry farming. Important foundations toward a successful free-range farming. Critical in attaining sustainability and good profit. Ibig sabihin po nito, may mga hinahawakan po tayo mga haligi para ang ating negosyo ay tumakbo ng maayos. Number one is the genetics. Everything in poultry farming starts with good genetics. Your chicken genetic must match the program that you will do for your production. Free range farming requires robust and productive birds with the least feed cost. No? Together with genetics, you need the knowledge and skills. Knowledge is the most critical variable that is dependent on the farmer himself. So, depende po yan sa farmer kung masipag siya mag-aral, sinatsaga niya pong aralin, no? Para po magbago ang kanyang foresight at programa towards successful farming. As I have said, an educated farmer is a successful farmer. Investing in knowledge is the first step a committed farmer must do. It is the learning process first before doing the farming process itself. Learn the entire program. Continue to learn, learn, and learn. Nutrition. Feeds must be effective in unlocking the good genetics of the chicken. Always remember that 70% of your entire cost of production is on feeds. Feed wastage due to low productivity will result in losses and dictate the success or failure of the program. 70% of your cost is feeds. Provide them bad, lousy, adulterated feeds they will not give you the right productivity that you're asking from them eventually you will be losing money so we always remind the farmers to get good nutrition when it comes to unlocking the genetic potential of the chicken management and facilities ensure that your facilities match your farming program invest in good housing and equipment to greatly reduce incidences of disease and mortalities Educate properly your personnel and empower them. Take note of that. You have to educate your personnel and empower them with that knowledge. Make time to tend to your farming. At least 7 hours a week is required for you to attend to your farm. Always remember that a knowledge farmer will transfer the good qualities of being a knowledge farmer to his caretaker. That is very important. And eventually, success will follow you. No? So, important po yan, mga haliging yan, that will support. It is like the cog of the wheel that will create a program that will uh, uh, make your wheel run to be successful towards progress. Pagka po pila yan o flat yan, hindi po tatakbo ng maayos. Either of those four are missing, it will not run well for your poultry farming. Continuing education or module 2, doable, replicable, sustainable farming program for free-range chicken, which is proven based on scientific methods. It is customized for small and medium-scale farmers. This is the module 2 that you will go into if you are really interested in doing this program. You know, if you are really committed to do this program. You know? This is from the farm of Roderick Gray in Omingan, Pangasinan. As you can see, the chickens are very healthy, they are very active, and they are very productive. No? So for those farmers who are interested with module 2, no? these are the lecture topics that you will encounter. So medyo mahaba po but these are more detailed and more, uh, more precise that matches the program. From the history of chicken, 
housing, brooding, biosecurity, vaccination, feeding, layer management, marketing, cost profit analysis, health management, no? and the common diseases that you will encounter. So this is a very good way to prevent your farm to fail because you don't know enough knowledge to make it run. Now the date of the online lecture for module 2 we will announce through Dominant Asia Pacific FB page. So I would recommend that you like our uh, Dominant Asia Pacific page. And you can also look into my uh, personal uh, Facebook, which is Erwin Joseph Cruz. Okay. Uh, you can check the photos there and the announcements, as well as in Doc Erwin Cruz Free Range. These are my two Facebook uh, addresses that you can go into. But I would recommend that you go to Dominant Asia Pacific FB page. So you will be fully updated of the seminars and the module 2. So if you are interested in the continuing comprehensive education, please PM us at Dominant Asia Pacific. So hanapin niyo po sa Facebook, Dominant Asia Pacific. And then uh, you will uh, message us and tell us we're in interested with the module 2. Please include your complete name, cell phone number, occupation, city, and province so that uh, we can reply to you the soon as possible. So always put there, indicate that I am interested to proceed with the module 2. So in behalf of my family, in behalf of the farmers who helped me, Create this program. Maraming salamat po. And th thank you very much, really, from the bottom of my heart for the things that you have done, the journey that we've gone through for the past 20 years. Mabuhay po tayong lahat. So I hope that this will not be the last time we're going to have uh, this encounter. And uh, uh, if you are really interested, you can go to Module 2, Module 3, and Module 4. And uh, wait for our further announcements at Dominant. Asia Pacific page. Thank you very much and God bless to all.